Hi, Dr. Gary Frenette here. And as you uh, recall, you've already seen, I believe, the first chemotherapy video which we would recommend, and that's a general chemotherapy video. In that video, we talk about some of the commonalities that all treatments share and how you can anticipate and react to some of the potential issues you might face. However, as we mentioned, there's about 75 different medicines that we call chemotherapy. And we now wanted to produce a video speaking to you about the specific medications you'll be taking. In this video, we're going to discuss several issues with regard to that treatment. How, does those, how do those drugs work? How are those treatments administered? What is the schedule of treatments? And uh, we'll go into some of the potential reactions you could have to that treatment and how you can adjust to them. As always, whenever you have any questions, you should call your health care team if there's ever an issue. But by watching these videos, you may be better able to anticipate and prepare for some of the rare side effects that can happen. So as you can see here, we're actually within a chemotherapy a treatment room. And we have chemotherapy uh, chairs where you can sit and even lie back. There's TVs and internet access so that you can be entertained. And we'll also allow you to have a family member with you, or a friend with you, during your treatment. The specific number of treatments and the regulations such as how old they need to be uh, will be discussed with you with your healthcare team during your chemotherapy teaching session. These videos, for example, are meant to supplement but not to replace that specific interaction you're going to have with us prior to your treatment. So you'll be able to get all your questions answered. During this video, what we'd recommend, as with the first video, is that you write down any questions you might have about your treatment. And then we can discuss those specifically when you come for your appointment to make your appointment more productive and to make sure all your questions have been appropriately addressed. There are some issues that you might imagine come about when you're getting chemotherapy treatment that I just like to uh, discuss briefly. And as you can tell, we're in a large chemotherapy treatment room. That's done on purpose so that the nurses can have visual access to you during your treatment. If there are any unfortunate reactions or uh, problems that you're having, we can recognize those immediately. Because it is an open space though, we usually ask that patients refrain from wearing heavy perfumes or colognes. Although you may not be bothered by them, other people may be more sensitive to smells during that treatment and uh, therefore would appreciate you wearing as little perfume or cologne as possible. Likewise, oftentimes patients will bring snacks or food into the chemotherapy treatment room, which is completely reasonable and appropriate but we'd ask that they not be especially strong smelling because once again, some people can de uh, develop an aversion to strongly smelling food uh, during their treatment. And so as a courtesy to others, we would ask that you uh, try to uh, respect that during your treatment. In addition, uh, in, a, uh, in addition to the TV, for example, or uh, computers, a lot of times people like to listen to music or other uh, audible uh, uh, entertainment. Uh, because other people may be trying to rest, it's always a nice idea to bring headphones or something like that into your treatment room so you can enjoy the music or the TV at the volume you like without having to worry about disturbing others. The next portion of the video is going to be a slide presentation of your specific chemotherapy treatment. Make sure you uh, have a notepad with you and jot down any notes or questions you might have or that the slide presentation generates so that we can answer them during your in-person visit with us afterwards. This video represents the views of Dr. Gary Furnett and not any clinic or hospital system. It's designed to supplement, but not replace, the written and verbal information provided to you during your teaching sessions. It reviews common trivial side effects as well as rare but life-threatening complications of therapy. Today we're going to discuss the Taxotere Brigetta Herceptin chemotherapy regimen. To understand how chemotherapy works and why we're recommending this treatment, we'll need a brief refresher course on biology. Remember, all living things are made of cells 
and the blueprint for how a cell and our bodies are made is encoded in a molecule called deoxyribonucleic acid, or DNA. Here's a brief video showing this process. So cancerous tumors are characterized by uncontrolled cell division. Both normal and cancerous cells divide by going, something, going through something called the cell cycle. The cell cycle goes from the resting phase through active growing phases and then to mitosis or cell division. The ability of chemotherapy to kill cancer cells depends on its ability to halt cell division. When the cancer cells are unable to divide, they die. Chemotherapy kills cancer cells more effectively than normal cells since the cancer cells divide faster. They therefore don't have the time to repair themselves and die when they try to divide. The cell cycle is going to be shown in a little more detail in the next video. The scheduling of chemotherapy, therefore, is based on the type of cancer, the rate at which the cancer cells divide, and the time at which a given drug is likely to be effective. That is why chemotherapy is typically given in cycles. Cycles are simply treatments that are separated by time intervals. During this time interval, the cancer is killed while the normal cells have time to heal. When that healing is incomplete, side effects occur. The normal cells most commonly affected by chemotherapy include blood cells, the lining of the stomach and the colon, and hair follicles. 
This accounts for some of the common side effects of chemotherapy, which could include low blood counts, mouth sores, nausea, and hair loss. The first drug we're going to talk about is Taxotere, and it belongs to a group of drugs called the plant alkaloids. Taxotere is also known as an antimicrotubule agent or a spindle fiber inhibitor. Antimicrotubule agents, such as Taxotere, inhibit microtubule structures within the cell. Remember, spindle fibers or microtubules are part of the cell's apparatus for dividing and replicating itself. These spindle fibers help separate duplicated DNA into each dividing cell. Taxotere inhibits this process, thereby killing the actively dividing cancer cell. We'll see the function of spindle fibers in the next video. Herceptin or trastuzumab is a monoclonal antibody, and this is an antibody that targets a protein on the cancer cell surface called HER2 or HER2 nu. In about 20 or 25% of the breast cancer patients, this protein is overexpressed on the cancer cell, and it leads to uncontrolled proliferation of the cancer. Herceptin binds to the HER2 nu protein, which prevents it from sending its growth signal to the cell nucleus. The cancer cell is highly dependent on the growth signal and dies when it's blocked by Herceptin. Your own immune cells may also help kill the cancer cell after recognizing Herceptin on the cell surface of the cancer cell. The next video shows this schematically. How Progetta works. As you saw from the previous video, the HER2 new must couple or dimerize in order to send its signal to the cell nucleus. Pergetta is a monoclonal antibody, like Herceptin, that binds to the HER2 nu protein. It specifically blocks the coupling or dimerization, thereby inhibiting cell growth and helping to ultimately kill the cancer cell. The schedule of Taxotere, Progetta, and Herceptin is as follows. The drugs are given by vein, that is intravenously or IV, every 21 days. Ananausea medications are given prior to the administration of Taxotere while you're in the office by vein, and by mouth as needed afterwards. The regimen takes about three to four hours to administer, and a steroid, dexamethasone or decadron, is given the day prior to chemotherapy, the day of chemotherapy, and the day following chemotherapy. It helps to decrease fluid retention from Taxotere as well as allergic reactions, and the dose is usually 8 milligrams twice a day. Growth factors such as Neupogen or Neulasta may be given under the skin subcutaneously as needed to help your white cells or immune system recover more quickly. Here the schedule is shown schematically. Remember Decadron is started, 
the day prior to chemotherapy and continues till a day after the chemotherapy is completed. All three drugs are given in the office at one time, the Taxotere, Progetta, and Herceptin, and remember that other drugs may be given, such as Nulasta or Nupagen, under the skin to help your white cells recover more quickly. And this regimen is repeated every 21 days or three weeks. Taxotere, Progetta, and Herceptin are rarely associated with infusion reactions. These reactions can be notable for flushing, shortness of breath, palpitations, or lightheadedness. Most reactions are mild, but very rarely they can be serious or life-threatening. For this reason, you'll be closely watched during the initial portion of your treatment. Infusion reactions are reduced by dexamethasone, and other drugs such as antihistamines may be added as needed. Now we're going to review the side effects of Taxotere, Progetta, and Herceptin. Most importantly, remember that each person's reaction to chemotherapy is different. Some people have very few side effects, while others may experience more. The side effects described here won't affect everyone who has this chemotherapy regimen. Some side effects include things such as heartburn. This often feels like a pit in the stomach, or even nausea, and can be treated with medications. Constipation or diarrhea can occur. Diarrhea is more common and can be treated by eating soluble fiber, the BRAT diet, that is bananas, rice, applesauce, toast, or antidiarrheal medications. Muscle pain or headaches can occur with Taxotere or Neupogen. These can usually be treated with pain medications over the counter. Hair loss will occur about two to three weeks after initiation of the regimen. Loss of hair on the head occurs first, but eyebrows, eyelashes, or pubic hair can be lost as treatment proceeds. Your hair will grow back at a normal rate after treatment, but at first may have a different color or texture. The cost of a wig may be covered by your insurance. Nail changes can occur with Taxotere. There are conflicting data regarding placing fingers in ice during treatment to help alleviate this issue. Maintain good nail hygiene and avoid false nails. Gloves may also help protect your nails during work. Mouth sores, as well as nasal tenderness, can occur and are usually mild with this regimen. Blood counts, especially white blood cells that help you fight infection, are reduced with this regimen. This usually occurs five to seven days after treatment's given. You should report any fever greater than 100.5 or a shaking chill to your healthcare team. You may be given shots to help promote recovery of your immune system. Nausea is usually quite mild with this regimen. If it occurs, it will usually occur about six to 48 hours after treatment. Once again, you'll be given anti-nausea medications before your treatment by vein and by mouth afterwards as needed. Herceptin progetta can rarely cause decreases in heart function or the pumping function of the heart. Your heart function therefore will be measured during prior to starting therapy and about every three months during treatment as well. Numbness of the hands and feet can occur due to the effect of taxotere on nerves, and this is known as peripheral neuropathy. You may also notice that you have difficulty buttoning shirts or putting in earrings. It's important to report these symptoms to your doctor as they may be controlled by slightly lowering the dose of the drug. This side effect usually improves slowly a few months after the treatment is finished. Remember that all these drugs can affect fertility. Talk to your healthcare team if this is an issue for you. During chemotherapy, you must practice adequate contraception. For nausea prevention and management, as we've mentioned, we're going to be prescribing intravenous anti-nausea medications just prior to your chemotherapy. However, you'll also receive prescriptions for oral medications you can take by mouth if you experience nausea once you get home. If you do experience nausea, take these medications immediately and don't wait for it to pass or go away by itself. Since these medications can cause constipation, you may need Miralax or another mild laxative. Medications you may uh, receive with your chemotherapy to take afterwards as needed could include Zofran or Ondansetron. You should take one eight milligram tablet every eight hours as needed for nausea. This medication doesn't cause drowsiness, so it can be a good choice to take uh, while you're awake during the day. Phenergan or promethazine should be taken as one tablet every six hours as needed for nausea. 
this medication causes variable no, uh, drowsiness and therefore you should gauge your own effect on it before driving. Ativan or lorazepam almost always causes drowsiness. It can be a good choice to take at night before you're going to bed. Let's review some commonly asked questions regarding Taxotere Progen and Herceptin. Can I drive to my chemotherapy treatments? Well, we'd like you to have a driver for your first treatment. If you receive drugs such as antihistamines that cause sedation, you may also need a driver for subsequent treatments. Will I gain weight with steroids such as dexamethasone? These drugs can cause fluid retention and increased appetite in some patients. Be aware of your food intake as well as the quality of the food you're eating. For example, avoid excessive desserts or salts. Can I get manicures, pedicures, massage therapy? Manicures and pedicures are usually avoided during aggressive chemotherapy. If you're receiving chemotherapy chronically, it may be possible to have manicures and pedicures, but you'll want to bring your own tools and avoid cutting cuticles. Avoid harsh skin scrubs if you have skin sensitivity on the palms or soles of the feet. Massage, on the other hand, is usually very helpful during treatment, but avoid deep muscle massage if your platelet count is low. Are there any food restrictions? Avoid uncooked fish, meat, or eggs. There are no restrictions regarding fresh fruit and vegetables. Simply wash them as you normally would before eating them. You may find you prefer cooler, lighter foods and meals during treatment. Smoothies with protein supplements can also be a healthy, attractive food choice. Can I exercise during chemotherapy? Absolutely, and we strongly recommend that you do so in order to maintain your strength and endurance during treatment. You should pace yourself, especially on your slow days, and stop when you become fatigued. Can I change my diet or should I change my diet to avoid cancer in the future? We'll, just, we'll discuss dietary changes, but you may find that only certain foods appeal to you during treatment or that your sense of taste has changed. Therefore, start slowly with any dietary changes and really just focus on healthy, non-processed foods as a start. Should I take anti-nausea medications at home after my treatment? Well, as we discussed, this may be necessary and you'll be provided these prescriptions during your visits. Can I take my regular medications? Unless you're informed otherwise, continue your current medications as prescribed by your physicians. Should I take vitamins or supplements? There can be significant interactions between supplements or vitamins and chemotherapy drugs. Therefore, assemble a list of all the vitamins and supplements you're taking. In general, we prefer to omit these medications and supplements and vitamins during your treatment until after your chemotherapy is complete to avoid any potential cross reactions. These supplements and vitamins can usually be resumed after therapy is completed. Do I need a port or intravascular access device? Although we can often treat intravenously by in simply inserting an IV catheter into the arm, ports are required for continuous infusion of drugs, poor or limited venous access, or when the drugs are irritating to the veins. The video at the end of this summary is going to provide an overview of ports for chemotherapy administration. So in summary, the Taxotere Progetta Herceptin Regimen is effective medicine because there is a therapeutic window. In other words, the drugs are specifically designed to be toxic to cancer cells while your normal cells have the ability to recover from the treatment. The chemotherapy treatment and supportive medications, such as anti-nausea drugs and shots to help your immune system, are delivered at specific times during each treatment or cycle. The side effects from chemotherapy are generally mild, self-limited, and managed with medications or behavioral changes. Severe side effects are very rare. Lastly, if you have any questions or concerns regarding your therapy or the symptoms you're experiencing, please call your health care team. That's really what we're here for. Well, I want to thank you for watching the second video today, and I hope you've written down all your questions so that we can address them during a personal visit uh, with your healthcare team, what we call a chemotherapy teaching session prior to your therapy. That way, I'm very confident that you're going to be comfortable with your treatment and be able, be able to anticipate any issues that arise. As always, however, if something unexpected happens, I want you to feel very free to call us at any time for any reason so that we can address any concerns you might have.
My friend and colleague, Dr. Eric Wang, is now going to briefly discuss the use of venous access devices, or porticasts as we sometimes call them, in the use of chemotherapy. Not everyone who receives chemotherapy needs a porticath. But, for example, those patients with poor access to veins in their arm, or patients who require continuous infusions of chemotherapy over one to two days, will be benefited by the use of these ports. With these ports, you can swim, you can shower, and perform other activities, as he'll now discuss for you. So move ahead to the next section of the video. If you think you may uh, want to learn more about these devices, or if you believe you're a candidate for these. Welcome, I'm Dr. Eric Wang, Interventional Radiologist with the Vascular and Interventional Specialists of Charlotte Radiology. Your healthcare provider has ordered a port placement for you. I'm here to review this procedure and to make you and your family members feel at ease. A port is a small device used to obtain safe and reliable access to administer IV medications, such as chemotherapy drugs or antibiotics, and also used to obtain blood samples. Port is a small device, as I mentioned, and is about the width of a quarter and less than half an inch thick. The port is implanted underneath the skin surface at the chest, a few centimeters below the collarbone, and this tubing is then inserted into a neck vein. Most patients are relieved after they have had their port placed that they no longer have to be stuck multiple times in their arms to get IV access. The port, once healed, is relatively unnoticeable and requires very little care. Patients resume their normal daily activities. This can include taking baths, exercise, and even swimming without worrying about the port. During your port placement, you will be taken to an interventional radiology suite where sophisticated x-ray equipment will be used for safe placement of your port. A technologist will then use special soap to wash the upper chest and neck, and then a sterile drape will be placed over the skin surface in order to provide a sterile environment to decrease the risk of infection. Once you are prepped, the nurse will give you sedation through an IV, and I will give you local numbing medication at the skin access site. A small pocket is created at the upper chest level, and then a catheter is placed under lifetime x-ray guidance into a neck vein. Once the port is placed, the pocket will be closed in a couple layers of absorbable suture, which will heal on its own. You will then go to the nursing recovery area and rest for about an hour prior to going home. Thank you for allowing Charlotte Radiology to be your healthcare provider. Please do not hesitate to ask additional questions during your visit.